to. No, I'm in Jeannie. Oh, you should be able to see Jean. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't see her. So okay. So is Jeannie on? Oh, the... here, switch to okay. Uh, it may be the view that you're looking at. Yeah, it is. It, I just figured it out. Okay. I'm fairly new to Zoom. Okay. Yeah, because you can either see speaker view or you can see gallery view. Is Jeannie online, Cass? She is. Okay. So we have Hello. Jim, Jeannie, and then all of you here. Hi, Jeannie. Hello. All the meeting to order. Do, uh, do me a favor and move the microphone closer to you so that he can hear everybody on the other end can hear well. Okay. I'll call a meeting to order. Can you hear me, Jim? I can hear you. Jean, are you okay? Can you hear him? I can't see Jeannie. Yeah, she looks like she's frozen actually. <laughs> yeah, she's not even blinking. So I'm afraid that her connection might not be good right at the moment. She's, I think she's frozen. <coughs> That's an internet connection. Does she have socks? Hmm? Does she have socks? Good question. Yeah, oh, they're awful. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I can see her picture, but she's not moving. So I'm assuming that she's got an internet problem. Okay. I'll call the meeting to order. And the first thing on the agenda is to approve the minutes of our last meeting. Uh, first of all, let's let's uh, read off who's here. Yes, you need to do a roll call for that. Rob Mara is here, Joanne Gregory, Jim Tumber, and Jeannie McAllister. Uh, she is signed in by Zoom, but I'm, I'm not sure whether she can hear us. And then these two are. And Don Medeiros, our engineer, and Tony Dixera, the town administrator. Okay. All right, do we have a motion to approve the minutes of the 18th of November, 2019 meeting? I'll Any second it. Second? All right, Jim Tumber seconded it. And you might wanna move that microphone closer to you so they can hear you. So the meeting minutes have been uh, brought up for motion and seconded. Do we have a vote? And call of the attendee. Uh, Rob, Rob Mara votes for approval. Joanne Gregory approved. Jim Tumber approved. Jim Tumber said approved. So next item on the agenda is <laughs> to review the final design. Uh, one of the questions that came up right before the last change was from Jim Tumber about the depression in the oval and would that gather water create an issue for both the plants and create a place for mosquitoes to breathe. Uh, just to re reassure you, Jim, that uh, independent of your comment, uh, Don went ahead and put a drainage. I'll let Don explain it. Hi, uh, Don Medeiros. So the one thing we know is the the switchgrass that we're going to be planting in the center of the island the warm season grasses they do like a um they do withstand a, a dry wet environment similar to like a, a depressed uh, drainage area however what we will be doing is we will be putting a small drain in that a small catch basin grate in the island uh, with a pipe under the parking lot, and we'll and we'll, that will drain that area after a um, storm event, and okay. the pipe will out into the drainage swale on the west side of the parking lot. So we'll still be still be catching that drainage and, and handling it, but it'll it'll make it so that the the depression in the center island does not permanently hold water. Okay, good. And I, I think just for simplicity, if we go through the major changes since the last time, first of all, all the wildflowers are gone and replaced with, uh, you see the shrubbery in the front near the bluff. And that was warm season grasses. And then the other thing was, I'll let Don explain how the drainage on the west side of the lot has changed. 
Yeah, so Don Madeira, so on the west side of the edge of the parking area, remember we were trying to use a uh, riprap berm, which was, we originally chose that to serve for drainage as well as a parking barrier. And um, what we wound up doing is we took that riprap berm component out of the design um, and so what we'll be doing is we'll have um, three small drainage swales along the ed the west edge of the parking lot. Um, they'll be three. okay. Sorry, uh, I'm trying to orient west. Okay, yep. So they'll be they'll be so along the west edge of the parking lot. There'll be places where a uh, probably about a five foot long piece of curb stone will be sunk in the ground flush with the, with the surface of the gravel. Um, so those five foot curbs, there's, there's probably gonna be maybe six or eight of them total. Uh, those will be spots where the, the water flowing off the parking lot will flow over the curb and into, over the flush curb and, and down into the small drainage swale um, associated with it. Each, each of those three drainage swales, they will not be connected. They will be three separate swales, um, one at the, at the north end, one in the center, and one at the south end, all, again, all along the west edge of the parking area. And each of those swales will have its own small riprap um, overflow outlet, a, a level spreader type configuration. So uh, that'll allow the storm water to flow over the existing grass slope, uh, west not and not towards the towards the uh, bluff where it where it is now in the existing condition and by by splitting up the storm water into into small distinct areas we're basically encouraging less less accumulation of storm water meaning it's it's easier to deal with with you know three small storm water areas then put all the storm water to one area and then deal with that so that that's the idea behind that um, we think it's going to look more attractive than seeing a long continuous riprap berm, which we won't see anymore. We, we will have stones, boulders uh, sunk in the ground along that west edge of the parking lot. Um, and that will, the boulders will, will act as the traffic control in that area. We've had a pretty high surf recently. I, I was not down at the landing today. Were you, Joanne? Yeah. It was, it was less crowded today than it was yesterday. But, uh -huh. yeah. um, I mean, it was almost full, but I didn't, you know, there wasn't any real yeah. issues. They weren't like driving over the rocks or anything right. like that. I know so they I were mean, squeezing in there pretty tight. Last week, there was, uh, was it Friday? It was a day last week in afternoon. There were over 50 cars and some of them were blocking the entrance. Actually. Yeah, they parked yeah. Yeah. to the edge there and then they Actually, people would park in Holly's um, yard and wait for space. Mm -hmm. um, but so I don't know. Well, it's going to be a learning experience for the yeah. surf crowd and for the, uh, the rest of the people, including the police. So, uh, any other questions? Any other highlights that you want to point out, Don? Or uh, one other one other change we incorporated was um, dock piles around the center island, basically as traffic control to keep vehicles off the center island. Um, we we chose the dock piles just because we didn't have want to. We we're trying to break up the look of having you know boulders everywhere. So we thought the dock piles would around the center island would be a nice uh, break from the from the boulders, which will ring the outside of the, of the parking lot area. I think the plan looks terrific. Mm -hmm. I do too, yeah. Um, nice work. These dark circles of the boulders? Yes, the solid black circles of boulders, the, the circles that, that have, uh, that are broken into four, two yeah. white segments, two black segments, those are dock piles. Okay. And um, you know, we should thank Save the Bay for their help, but mostly this is Don's work and we're very proud of what the plan looks like now. I believe Jean has a question. She has her hand raised. I don't know if you can hear me, can you? Yes, we can. I was just curious, can motorcycles get through? I, 
I've, I've observed that people are really respecting the barriers, but um, motorcycles are going right through and up to the edge of the bluff. Uh, Don Medeiros, yeah, Gene, um, I guess motorcycles will be able to get through as currently designed. We have um, the boulders are supposed to have maximum of six feet spacing in between them, which that, that would allow a motorcycle and the, and the dock piles have a similar, um, similar six foot spacing in between them. So, um, so yes, that will be possible under the current design. Okay. Yeah, I think the, uh, since the road is in better shape, we get more motorcycles coming down on the dirt because the road has been graded and there's a new type of material on the roadway where, where before that motorcycles don't like to hit those bumps and get scratches on their paint jobs, having been a motorcycle owner for a long time years ago. So. Any other questions? I don't, there's no, there is no way to really address that because then you, would, no. you wouldn't be able to walk through either. <laughs> if you right. walk, like Bicycles you too. Walk. Is that something we could address with signage? Well, you, we could put it on, you know, if we have one sign, we don't want 50 signs, but yes, I think we can address it right at the entrance way, we'll probably have a sign that says one way to not park on grass, period. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah, I think- It's also should... something we could add later if it becomes a problem. Oh. Yeah. All right. Any questions that you have, Don, or? No, I, I do not have any. Jim or Jeannie or? No, looks great. Can't wait to see it. <laughs> All right. Is, so, is there uh, a groundbreaking date? Well, we'll we're just getting to that ne next. Um, so we, we did the second thing on the agenda. We'll review the bidders conference next, but before that, we had some dates that we had set out that were published in the RFP. So we published the RFP around September 2nd or 3rd, I think. Mm -hmm. And in there, we had a bidders conference on September 14th, and we'll review that in a minute. They are supposed to submit the bids by- Thursday the 24th. Thursday the 24th, 24th. Yep. four o'clock. And then we'll award the bid by the 30th, which is also uh, town council meeting, right? No, town council meeting is the 24th. If you put that they okay. were gonna award by the 30th, they'll either have to have a special meeting or they'll have to authorize Tony to award. Okay. Otherwise there wouldn't be another council meeting until yeah. um, October. Well, uh, how do we do that? You'll, you'll It'll have to be dealt with in the council meeting. Okay. How do we which is which is on the first, Carol? No, we have a council meeting this Thursday on the twenty fourth when the bids are received. So we'll we'll put it out into the second um, Thursday, the eighth of November or October. It, well, it, it depends. Did you put in your bid documents that it would be awarded by the thirtieth? Yes. Oh, so we're going to have to get the council to either do a special meeting or authorize Tony to be able to award the bid. I think it's just easier to authorize Tony. And you, you have to let the five members decide yeah. what they want. Okay, to all right. Yeah. And then um, we had in the bid document that we worked starting the middle of October and finishing by the middle of November. And I'll have Don explain how the work is going to be broken up between fall and spring. All right, uh, Don Madera. So um, we, we uh, broke the work up, as Rob said, into two phases, the fall phase and the spring phase. The fall phase is basically going to be everything about the parking lot, uh, doing the gravel parking lot and the drainage. 
as well as setting the the um, the dock piles and the traffic control boulders around the perimeter, um, and then basically loaming and seeding the just the ed outer edges, outer perimeter of the parking lot, just so that the parking lot itself is intact and it's stabilized. Um, and then for the spring phase would be um, all the plantings, the shrubs and the tree plantings, um, as well as the um, gravel parking area, the old existing gravel parking area that extends from the new parking area um, southerly toward the top of the bluff. That will be coming out as part of the spring work as well. And that area, all those areas will receive loam and, and be seeded in the spring. So the, the idea was we wanted to, because of the warm, because of the drought this, this season, we didn't want to do the shrub and tree plantings. And as a result of that, we want the contractor in the spring to not be driving over areas that were loamed and seeded in the fall. So we, we kind of broke the work up in, in, that, in that manner. Question. Is the plant is going to be closed during this work? Or yes. Okay. Could yes. you repeat that? I think she needs you to repeat that. With the mask on, she can't hear very well. Sorry, James, Joanne. I just asked if um, the landing would be closed while the work was being done. And the answer was? Don Medeiros, yeah, the answer is, is yes. That was something that um, came out of the... Uh, the bidders conference on site and um, the day we were there was pretty obvious there were a lot of people there in the parking lot and so the, the town um, is going to make the commitment to the um, successful bidder that the town will make sure that the public is closed from entering the parking lot during normal working hours so that the contractor can have the room to, to do their job properly. So, uh, Tony, do you think we should we should touch base with the police so they? Yeah. Yes, definitely we should. Uh, okay. I can coordinate that. That's not a problem. Good. Well, once we work through the award and the bid, we, mm -hmm. we can follow up. Let's hope we don't have heavy surf. <laughs> <laughs> what is the start date again? I didn't quite catch that. Construction Middle start date. Middle of October. So no specific date. I think we put the 14th of October in the bid document. Okay. So that means that the 12th current- 12th October. Was it? That means, sorry. It was the 12th of October was listed as the start date. Okay. Sorry, Jeannie. What will happen to the current barrier and chain when things start and then when when the business day is over and people want to go in will they still be prevented from going all the way to the edge that that that's don Medeiros. that's a that that's a good question um we may in fact in the in the early stages of the construction we may in fact have to just close the close it um 24 hours 24 seven until the contractor um, gets far enough along because obviously they're not going to be able at the end of the day to start making temporary traffic barriers every day so right we may in fact have to thank you for pointing that out we may in fact be well advised just to close that area down until construction advances enough that we feel comfortable to open it up after hours before the construction is done. Right. I don't think that Thank they you. Want their equipment exposed to the public either. Right. Hey, Rob, I have to jump off in about 10 minutes. If there's any agenda items that we need a quorum for in order to vote, is there, is there anything else on the agenda? Assign some tasks. So if you sign off in 10 minutes, we can go ahead and assign you to a task. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Nice try. <laughs> So you don't have anything he needs to vote on tonight? Not really. No, okay. We're not voting on anything that I can think of. Okay. okay. All right, next. Uh, 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 any, anything that you need to add for the RFP process? Uh, uh, I, I can very quickly cover that. Uh, 
obviously the first thing is to accept the bids on the 24th, this Thursday. Uh, then I'm sure the, the council will refer those to me and uh, excuse me, we gotta review those. And uh, you know, once we review them, come up with a recommendation. And as uh, Carol pointed out, uh, if the council wishes for me to award those on behalf of the town, obviously they'll have to give me permission at that point in time to authorize that, you know. Um, but you know, let's say that all goes through, we award the bid, uh, then we need to meet with the contractor to get the bond, you know. So we need to get a performing bond at that point and also review the timeline for the construction. Uh, but that would be done as the clerk of the works, Good. you know, to work with you. Then. Okay. Good, thank you. All right, so I think we're at the stage now where we can discuss uh, fundraising. And Don and Tony, uh, especially Don, if you want to take off. Or... Oh. Unless exactly. you want to help us fundraise. <laughs> well, his name is on the list. Okay. <laughs> send me something in the mail. <laughs> yeah. We will be sending you things in the mail, maybe multiple times. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. I'll go home and have dinner. Thank you. thank you. All right, before Tony goes, one thing about fundraising, we have a goal of 25000 all the money is going to come into the town. Mm -hmm. It's going to be put in uh, a special account in the town. Um, and, and then I don't know what the future of our committee is, but it would be uh, delegated for use for the town landing. It's either additional beautification or maybe mulch or watering if we go through another drought next, uh, next uh, spring or the spring after that. So that's, that's uh, uh, how the money is going to be handed. And is there a water here. source? Is there going to be any kind of water source here? Uh, Does that well still work? We're not sure. That's one of the questions that we'll look at. We won't need water till the spring. Right. But I'm just curious whether that well that's there is still active or whether there's been any discussion behind the scenes about putting a well point in. There's a cap on top of it, a metal cap, we may be able to have Curtis and, and uh, uh, Sean take a look and just pull the cap up a little mm -hmm. to see if there's any water down there. I'm guessing it's a dug well, so that there may, may or may not be water in it. Yeah. But, um, I think we can count on just having to get a, a, a trailer of water sitting down there for watering purposes. Okay. Because if you have the well, then you need a pump and you need electricity and a generator. Right. Yeah. You know, so just be easy to have. Um, to rent Would it make sense to put some kind of uh, electrical conduit in underneath all these structures we're about to put in so that we can, we have the, the possibility of adding power down there at some point in the future? No. It's cheap to do it now, but it's very expensive later on to try to. Part of the problem is. There are no poles on that end of the road. Uh, there aren't any poles until we get past the dirt area hmm. of, uh, of the road back onto Grange Avenue because those poles were sunk. So I think you're talking big bucks to dig a trench well, well, except we're going to have up. everything, all this, all these soils are going to be disrupted in the process of shaping the parking area and the swale and the, um, and, you know, just some laying down three inch PVC, you know, conduit and stubbing it up somewhere over by the entrance to the facility it might be something that might be a couple hundred bucks to throw that in there. That way we have that option if if you want to, if watering is truly going to be an issue, I mean. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Man. I think we'll have to punt on that and take a look at that later. What would we be using power down there for? Um, for pumping water out of that well, even with a temporary, like a, just a portable pump and during a drought, if that's, I, I, you mentioned watering, I'm not envisioning, envisioning anything other than pumping out of that well. I guess you can get pool water truck in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would think, Jim, that, um, you know, any watering done out of that well, it would be most 
economical with with just a small generator in a in a pump. Uh, yeah. Okay. All rather right. Than, rather than try to bring in power just for that, continue. To That's a good point. Very good point. Okay. Just a thought. Thank you very much. Tom. Right. Good work. Thank, Thank you all. You, Tony. Good night. Thanks, Don. All right. So uh, we'll get on to discussing fundraising. And I'll, I'll begin the discussion by trying to give an overview of what we think we can do. Um, right now, I have a, an email list with 410 names and addresses. And we have a mailing list of 500 names and mailing addresses that was taken from the town property records, the tax roll. And uh, the, the mailing list is cleaned up. So we have first and second name that is on there like Bill and Jane or Carol and Ed and, and not uh, Mr. and Mrs. and all that stuff because their middle initials or their trust name and all that. So what I envision is that, um, uh, oh, some other things that are in place now is we have Laura Haviland, uh, Laura Haviland from Sweet and Salty Farm, who has offered to help us with MailChimp. And MailChimp is an emailing program that uh, allows uh, large emails to go out without find, finding their way into people's junk folders and um, allows you know, for things to be addressed individually rather than group emails and uh, allow some formatting. And if, you, if, if we all get sweet and salty from newsletters or uh, newsletters from Skip Paul, they use MailChimp. It's okay. widely used, it's free, up to, up to 2,000 emails a month. So we have MailChimp, we have a mailing list, we have the ability to take ads in the newspaper. Um, Joanne and I both have written a little blurb and I'll, I don't think I sent you Joanne's, but I'll do that tomorrow. They're pretty similar. Joanne's has a nice formatting and it's easier to read than mine. And that could also form the basis of the advertising. I don't think we need to do much to put that into an ad in this iconic times. So we can, we can do mail, and I think we'll do one mailing to the 500 people, and we'll do multiple emails to the 400 and so people on the email list. And I can give us all the email list and the mailing list tomorrow. But all I'm asking is that you do not distribute the list because it's kind of an invasion of privacy in a way, even though it's public records. I think it would hurt our uh, fundraising if people knew that we just distributed this list to everyone. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll ask you to take a look at the list and then destroy it. So we only have one list. And if you want to add people to the list, give me their names, address, or email. And I'll add them to the MailChimp list for our mailing list. And it's an Excel list. And the mailing list, I'll have to export into an Excel file. Maybe you should uh, export it to a PDF and then nobody can really use it. it it's more usable as, as an Excel spreadsheet. Right. If, it's, if it's just a PDF, then you just read it and you can't really do much with it. Okay. Unless you have a program where you can convert it. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking that. <laughs> That's true. And, and you guys are way more advanced than I am in technology. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you the list tomorrow. I'll convert them to PDFs, look at it, and I'll um, sort it by name, last name, so we can take a look. And I sort it by last name, by address, I can do away with duplicates and all that stuff. <clears throat> So we have two pretty good lists and we'll put an ad asking people for money, send their checks to the treasurer, hopefully the treasurer or the finance director, new title. Well, there's a different person, the finance director. There is a finance director. Right now there's a treasurer and a finance director. Okay, who will be receiving? 
it, it will be the finance director's office that will be receiving them. All right, addressed so, to the, uh, made out to the town of Little Compton. All right, so I'll send you the, the blurb mm -hmm. and you can tell us exactly the title. We don't need a person's name. No, it's, it's to go to the, I would say it should go to the treasurer's office, um, but I'll double check with how they want it phrased tomorrow. All right, and then the treasurer by IRS rules, since donations to this fund will be considered tax exempt, or not tax exempt, but will consider will be considered a charitable contribution. Because the, the town can accept uh, gifts, and the person giving the gift gets a charitable contribution. I don't know if you're a five hundred one c three or a five hundred one c three seven nine whatever. Yeah, we we have a five hundred one three. I think it's seven. I think. Yeah, I think it could be seven. Be. All right, so um, we have an ad in the paper, and I'm thinking maybe one or two ads. Carol and I will have to talk about costs. We'll do a mailing. One mailing should be sufficient, and several emails. And we could use different uh, formats for the emails. And uh, I've given everyone uh, a shared file of photos. I think, Joanne, you've looked at them. Um, there's a man who lives on off Point Meadow Road on that little road, Ship Pond Cove Road, whatever it is, that goes off to the left. And his name is Doug Levy. He's a scientist with the National Institute of Science. And he's been a longtime resident. His parents were longtime residents. His mother was a brown owl. And they own most of the property down there. And he gave us some photos and two watercolors that his relatives had, had, uh, had painted going back to the late 40s and early 50s. And if you haven't got, uh, got onto the shared file, look at them because they are magnificent. Mm. And the striking difference is there's not one shrub, one tree, it's mm. all grass because all that land was pasture mm -hmm. for the farms that the Brown L family, or I can't remember the man's name, uh, it wasn't Chavez, it was on the, on the top of Granger Avenue and Shore Road, where there were a couple of dairies. So we can use those photos. We've gotten permission from Doug Levy to use the photos or the artwork in the ads and in our emails, and Laura's been working on that. So that's kind of where, where I see, and you know, certainly I've been out of marketing for 30 years, so one that has a better idea. Uh, we're kind of limited. We don't want to do a town-wide mailing, too expensive. And a lot of the town doesn't really come in contact with the landing. The mailing lists are the plats 14, 15, 31, and 33 that are near or surrounding the, the landing. And the mailing list comes from some from Jim Tumber, some from my list. And uh, so that's where we are with mailings. And uh, so now what we need to do is uh, kind of uh, talk about when this would all start. I think you can handle talking. I, yeah. Somebody set their alarm. Oh. So um, I actually, I have to leave the meeting, but um, Rob, let's you and I talk tomorrow about okay. what you decide. All right. So okay. basically, uh, when we break ground, we'll get press in the Seconic Times. Concurrent, or well, right after that, we'll put ads in the Seconic Times. I think we run two ads, two successive issues, asking for money, followed by an email, followed by the mailing in some format, email, first mailing, I don't care. So uh, what we need to come up with is kind of a schedule. And I'll talk with Joanne after the meeting, see if Joanne and I can kind of devise some type of schedule for when we do what. And basically, I'm all set with MailChimp. 
I'm all set with the mailing because I'm pretty good with word merge. But I need a letter for the mailing. We need the ad to be done. And then we need people to review the email that would be part of MailChimp. I think that's it. Oh, and someone to contact the Sakonic Times just to make sure that we get uh, press. Joanne, any comment? Uh, no. So, uh, um, can I ask a quick question? Yes. Is there any um, targeted way of reaching the surfers? They used to have no. some leaders they don't we don't have any kind of we have the leaders in the, in the mailing file and the email file okay the leader but uh, when i was down there two guys from the cape uh, often if we send them the email and i put their email in oh good okay uh, that they would distribute it to the ones they know what what's happening which is interesting the guys from the cape told me that we're getting a lot of Cape serpents because of the numerous number of white sharks in the water right. of the Cape. Yeah. So that's why- They I'm have thinking. apps that they can track them now. Yeah. So, well, if they said they see them, even yeah. worse. Yeah. So uh, that's why we're seeing a lot of the messages of thought. So basically we have an email list, we have a mailing list, we have an ad, and Joanne and I will try to get together to put some type of framework when we do what. Well, yeah. I have a question. So when we talk about the ad, and I and the pictures that we have are beautiful, but they're they're not current. Is there any way we can get sort of a someone to create a photo of what it will look like? Mm to put in the ad because people are going to want to know what are you doing and mm -hmm. you can't something like this they won't understand but you know how they can take a, a plan and sort of make like a, it's a phony yeah rendering a rendering yeah, yeah. All right uh, i've asked helpful, and the I answer think. is uh it's expensive yeah yeah i just think using an old photo mm. it's been kind of kind of right people can be like what's that they're going to see all the trees going. They're going to go, why are they taking down the trees? Well, if I were to use anything, I'd use the sketch of Heston's cottage. Because it's innocuous. It doesn't show what the landing is I today. I don't see how a picture of the old yeah. property is going to engage someone into donating to do something they're not going to really know what we're doing. Right. We have to kind how many? of like that with the ad too, is how are we going to um, present in an ad what we're going to do? I think we have to figure out a way to be descriptive. We can't have a drone. Yeah. Um, but we have to be careful about photos, especially old photos. Right. Because you're okay. gonna, people will interpret that differently. But, I, but. I agree. I, 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 when I looked at the letter, I felt like it was really good. Um, or the blurb, but I felt like it needed also some specifics about what the money would go to, like examples. Mm -hmm. So people I, knew what their money would go to. Right, but I think I, the blurb was more for an email, because right. kind of yeah. how I interpreted yeah. it. Um, so you're right, Jean, the letter would be, you would have a little more uh, descriptive, where in emails, you don't want to have all that descriptive because people don't read that right. line mostly. So, uh, and we have the description that was used in the RFP. I'm mean, not the RFP, but in the grant application. So, you know, basically, we could shorten up what the uh, um, you know, what what the purpose is, because that's that's one thing that we would probably also want to add in the letter is why do we need this fund if we right. have a grant? And we have some money from the town. Right. And they're going right. to know what that money is going to be used for. And I know you can't be 100% specific, but when people donate money, the expectation is right. they're not just giving it because, oh, I just want to give you money. They, at the very least, want to know what's going to happen to that donation. 
um, you know, when you say, like you said, for future beautification, maybe give some examples of what that beautification is. It, it's not going to be routine maintenance. It's not to cut the grass, yeah. right? It's more to uh, maybe care for the planting the first year, right? Did you need that the first year? I don't know, maybe there's some additional planting or bench. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, I put down the increase habitat, add habitat, and future beautification. We, we can we can come up with some words. One thing, one big thing is the memorial to Hester Simmons. Mm -hmm. And um, because so that, what, ta what tasks do you need help with then, Rob? What's that? What, what tasks task do you need help with? Okay, we need someone to take care of the advertising to, to make sure we get an ad. In the Sakonic Times? In the Sakonic Times. Yeah, I can do that once I see the blurbs or you want me to write the ad? I want you to write the ad. You can use the, you know, you can probably have the RFP, I mean, the grant thing somewhere. If you don't, I'll send it. Okay. Um, does anybody, I've only sent stuff in for the garden club. Do they have like a word limit or I guess it's as much as we want to pay for, huh? Well, you don't want too many words because people won't read it. Right. Might I suggest this is Carol Wardell that you create your ad and send it to me and I'll, okay. I'll send it in through our contact so that it gets charged to the town. Right. Okay, great. All right, so that's right advertising, Gene. Uh, draft letters for MailChimp and the personal approach. We need a volunteer. Well, I can volunteer to do the, the written pieces, but I cannot do personal solicitation because that's what I do. Okay, so session. you do MailChimp, I'll do the personal approach. Yes. So what you need a you need a um, a snail mail letter, right? Yep. And an email that can be right. sort of kind of altered. Although you really don't need to alter the email. No. Okay, next thing. The finance we're gonna have to take care of direct letters. So we have Jeannie advertisement, the press. How do we get the Sakonic Times to pay attention to this ball on the or more? Yeah. All right, I'll take care of that. Then they get they gave you some press time before. Yeah. You're on the yeah. front page, if I recall. I know. Was that when Tom Douglas was still here or was no, it? No, it was a new Kristen. Yeah. I can't I can't remember her last name off the top of my Kristen Ray, I think it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, All she's right. pretty good about responding. Okay, good. And that's it. Oh um, well, one one thing um, that we can we can wait a while on, but maybe we should talk. Donor recognition. If you stop at Grinnell Park, you know, Grinnell Beach, you'll see a plaque that's required by DEM giving them recognition. Also on that plaque, they recognize large donors, mm. people that contributed money. They don't tell you how much they contributed. They, they just thank the major donors and they list the donors. So I on think when we, on the, on the plaque. So I think we, you know, to me, someone giving $500 or above or $1,000 or above should be recognized. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I don't know how many thousand dollar donors we well, would get. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say, um, you know, you, you think you're, you have to determine what you consider to be a major gift right. for this project to determine who would be on the, the plaque. And you got to be careful because you could have too many people on the plaque. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like really yeah. um, but I don't know. I mean, we're in interesting fundraising times, too. Yeah. So, um, we could say no recognition. Don't give anyone any recognition. I, I wouldn't set it in stone right now. I'd wait. Yeah. Um, I agree. I'm, I'm assuming at some point, probably not till next year, you're going to want to have some sort of grand opening. Right. And some sort of ceremony. At that time, I would think 
by then you'll know who your major donors are. Right. And you also could do some sort of a program that you give the people that it lists all the people in print who, who did donate, small or large. And then by then, if you know somebody, let's just say somebody gave you $10,000 because they were really happy. Yeah. Then you recognize that type of large donor. You know, if someone offers you a really large gift, then I think the potential is there. Right. Right. Um, you know, you can offer them, you could offer a potential naming opportunity, like they could, they could purchase a bench and have their name laid on, on the bench. People really love sitting on those benches out yeah. there. Only a couple of okay. them, but they really so, enjoy it. The key is we don't have to decide that now. No, it doesn't no. need to go I, in an ad, no, doesn't need then, to go you in know, a letter. It's like that, you know, what they get as a recognition is very negotiable. Mm -hmm. Some people will just make the gift and not want anything back. Right. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody wants something back, they'll find a way to let you know what that is. So okay. just yeah. keep your ears open. Right. You know, I'll give you, you know, $10,000, but I want this. You know, and maybe we do it, maybe we don't. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I have a question about the ad. Is this um, strictly for purposes of soliciting donations or do you want to announce groundbreaking or what's the timeline for it? No, we don't need to announce it because we'll get press in the Sakonic Times just okay. to raise money. Okay. Unless. And how soon do we need something? Well, nothing's going to happen until October 12th. Which okay. Is three weeks away. Yeah, which is three weeks away. Well, you know, so I'd say you have a half hour. This is, this is a different year, but fundraising usually peaks in the last two months of the year, people right. donate the bulk of their funds in November and December because they're planning for end of year. At those people who are gonna give significantly, someone's gonna donate $25. It, that can happen anytime. But, um, you know, November and December are the highest, you know, the, the highest level of fundraising happens in those two months on an annual basis. Now, again, COVID is kind of, you know, fair in its ugly head still. So we don't know how that's going to be impacted. Um, the projection is fundraising will decline for the rest of the year because of COVID. So people are still uncertain. But, you know, if someone really likes this project, they'll, they'll probably mm -hmm. commit. So I think, you know, the 25,000, I think if we set a goal to try to raise that by the end of this calendar year, doesn't mean if we don't, we can't continue. The yeah, I wouldn't put a timeline on it. But I meant in terms of the focus of the advertising, the letter, yeah. things like that, we should try to plan those accordingly before the end of this calendar year. But, right. you know, you can keep in fundraising for as long as you want. But mm -hmm. that doesn't yeah. Okay, and I've noticed that we've gotten a lot of, I, We've gotten at home a lot of requests early from organizations. The tree committee, scholarship, Little Compton, I can't remember, the library have already sent out their appeal. Uh, the community center has sent out their appeal. This, this is about one and a half, so it's usually in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it might be a, a few weeks early, but it's not off by much. Right. Any other questions? So I'll write up the minutes and distribute them and I'll give you the two files to take a look at. Okay, sounds good. Good. Thank you. Uh, you know, any, is there a motion to adjourn? Thank you. Are you there? <laughs>